security concerns, anti-gay legislation, corruption. The Sochi Winter Olympics were consumed with controversy when they got underway back in February. Unfinished hotels did little to enthuse flattering reports from the visiting journalists, and an astro malfunction during the opening ceremony was slightly embarrassing. But at least the boss was happy. The president uh, uh, expressed uh, his uh, gratitude uh, toward uh, the team, and uh, he was uh, satisfied with the result. But when push comes to slide, it's about medals, and Team GB wasn't short on opportunity, with world and European title holders in skeleton, curling, skiing and short track. If they beat me, then they've worked hard to do it, kind of thing, so I'm definitely giving it my all. It wasn't long before Britain was celebrating, only two days after the opening ceremony, up here on the mountains above Rosa Kuta. Jenny Jones claimed our historic bronze in the women's snowboard slopestyle, the country's first ever medal on the snow, in the first time the event's been held at the Olympics but it came after an anxious wait. I knew that I would get bumped down because there were just so many more girls t to drop um, who were higher ranked. But um, to actually still stay there in that third position by the last girl, I was just over the moon. To come to an Olympic Games for a winter athlete is an amazing feat, never mind actually going out and winning a medal. So the fact that Jenny won a bronze medal and we've got some great athletes to come as well in all the sports, that um, you know it might be one or two more. No more from the freestylers, but it was a solid games for them, with Katie Summerhaves, Jamie Nichols, and Billy Morgan also notching up top 10 results. I just hope it inspires the younger generation to go out and start snowboarding and have fun like I did when, you know, when I started, because it, it is an amazing sport. It's fun for every level of, of ability, um, and more people should go and enjoy it. Jack Wilborn was the first Brit to make it to the medal rounds in the short track, but here he is showing how he crashed out in the final. It was a thousand metres, so not a bitter blow, as he much prefers the 500. At the end of the first week, Britain was in the medals again, this time for the golden variety, as Lizzie Arnold lived up to her favouritism in the women's skeleton. I can't believe it yet. I, it's been my goal, my dream for such a long time, and now I'm here. I've got absolutely no idea what's going on. I'm just laughing it all up. <laughs> can, can you get a picture of this, please? She celebrated her success with pretty much every Russian in the mountain, it seems, and spoke of her desire for others to achieve similar success themselves. I always said with my geography degree that I'd want to go into um, a, you know, a proper job within the geography sector, but secretly I'd really like to be a full-time athlete, and I was scared to say that dream, to say it out loud. And I'd just say to everyone, just go for it. You know, If you don't live it, you know, you're losing out. You've got to just do it. Around the same time as the weather heated up, rumblings about the conditions in the mountains, particularly the half pipe, were surfacing. The qualifiers are at 6.30 and then finals are at 9.30, so the pipe will get really bumpy and then it'll freeze, so it'll be frozen bumps, which is not ideal. Aside from the temperature and lack of fresh powder, the snowboarders complained about the design of the half pipe. They say it's shaped more like this, like a skateboard ramp, whereas they're used to a straighter U shape. But as the old saying goes, Everyone has to compete in the same conditions. Indeed they did, and many fell. Rowan Cheshire was a notable casualty, ending up in hospital with concussion. But she bounced back a few days later, and once again was supporting her teammates at the Extreme Park. British eyes refocus here on the Olympic Park at the shores of the Black Sea in the middle of the second week, as the men's and women's curling squads hope to atone for the disappointments of the 2006 and 2010 games. Both squads made it through difficult round-robin campaigns to reach the finals, and although Canada ultimately dashed the hopes for the major prize, bronze for the girls and silver for the guys was reward enough for two weeks high graph. That's something you just have to accept and uh, you know when you look back in the, the few weeks, um, the Olympic silver medal is something I dreamt about. So. We've had some fantastic wins, some devastating losses, but to know that you've put in absolutely everything, I said at the start of the week I walked home with absolutely no regrets and that's exactly what's happened. While the curlers were celebrating over there, over here at the Short Track Arena, hopes were high that John Ely and Elise Christie would soon join them. But fate can be a cruel mistress when it comes to the Olympics, and they learned that in spades. Ely was shut out in the semis of the 500 metres, and in the women's 1,000, Christie suffered another heartbreaking penalty, her third in as many events at the Games. Elise will learn from me, and she'll definitely get stronger from the experience, but we can all say that we, we skated well and we got our, our performance out there, it just, just didn't come together. Despite their disappointments, the speed skaters joined the rest of the British team as they returned home champions, having capped the best Winter Olympics ever for the country in 90 years. You know, 
obviously very proud and privileged to be uh, chef de mission of this very talented Team GB delegation. Uh, they perform well. It's not easy to win Olympic medals no matter where you go. And I'm delighted with the preparation, the way they perform with pride and passion they competed. And, and we're just focusing on the medal winners. We've had a big performance shift since Vancouver. A number of our sports have really uh, competed in the top 10 at the right end of the, the competition field from our point of view, so we're delighted with that. In the end, it was gold for Lizzie Arnold, silver for the men's curlers, and bronze for the women's, and Jenny Jones too.